Right, so he's going to go through some reps here of the rifle to pistol transition. Uh, it's a good skill set, obviously, uh, in close quarters combat or CQB to be able to have uh, the ability to change over on a rifle stoppage to a gun that actually works and you know it's going to work, it's going to be your pistol. Uh, obviously, from the lethality side, the rifle's a bit more lethal on the pistol, but at the distance, we should be just as lethal on both uh, rifle and pistol and have a mindset that we can get the job done with both rifle and pistol. So skill sets need to be quite high on both guns. And also the procedure of transitioning from rifle to pistol needs to be taken into consideration. Right? And then also what happens after that when we're putting the pistol away. Typically what happens is that we clear up the area with the pistol and then once we're secure and set, then we can uh, put the pistol away, get the rifle back up and running. All right. uh, a couple of key uh, points of performance for this one is that we're going to release positive control of the rifle. So safety catch needs to be applied to safe or uh, it needs to have a, a good attempt to apply safe to the rifle, uh, considering that in some stoppages, when the bolt's forward, for example, the safety catch can't be applied to safe. Uh, however, on this one, we're just going to set up an empty magazine, and we're just going to make sure that the safety catch gets applied to safe during the transition. Uh, we're also going to be operating white light on both guns, so momentary on the rifle, and I don't have a momentary on the pistol, so it's going to be a constant on, uh, which I'll uh, activate with my index finger and then turn off with my support thumb and place it back into uh, the holster. We'll go through scanning procedures as well, and, uh, and then after that we'll cover the check drill and also the individual protection drill uh, at night using the white light, okay, which is uh, a part of the combat shooting program and uh, what I've built in there for night fighting. All right, so the rifle to pistol transition, again, uh, five inch target at seven yards, and the actual time for this, just for the standard, is five seconds. However, it can be done a lot quicker than five seconds. Um, so long as all the points of performance are hit. Okay? Alright, here we go. Oh, one of the other points of performance for this one is to ensure that you've identified the stoppage. Now, uh, after shooting a rifle for a while, you'll get that familiar twang of the empty magazine, the bolt locking to the rear. It feels a little bit funny. However, we can't always rely on that as the indicator of an empty magazine. Under stress and uh, under less than desirable conditions or adverse conditions, we may uh, not feel that twang and we might just miss it. And the actual cue that we'll be going off is the weapon not firing, which is the preferred cue. Okay, we pick up on the diagnostic of the twang of the rifle where possible under operant conditioning. Uh, however, the actual cue for the rifle uh, in stoppage is the fact that it's not firing when you're pulling the trigger. So with the rifle to pistol transition, you can set yourself up for failure and a training scar on the range by just pulling the trigger one time, uh, but what we need to do is be able to pull the trigger two times to get the cue that the rifle's actually stopped. At that point on the second pull, when we get nothing on the gun, save the weapon, roll it off, and then we're going to take the pistol out and get a, an accurate pistol away. Don't forget to change gears between rifle and pistol, particularly with the two uh, different trigger weights and also weights of the gun. Okay, it makes it a little bit harder to fire the pistol, so just give yourself an extra tenth of a second on the trigger manipulation. <clears throat> Alright, here we go. All right, so a bit of hang time there on the pistol. Again, through training, we just want to make sure that we are confirming the trigger and the sights on the pistol, that we're not just rushing through it and expecting to shoot as quickly on the rifle as the pistol, particularly if the skills aren't quite there. So just give yourself a little bit of extra time there on the pistol trigger uh, to confirm the sights, make sure the grip's tight, stance is good, and our trigger control method is adequate to get the round on target. Okay, five inch circle at seven yards uh, under a fairly uh, tight time frame it's easy to shank that by moving the gun by being too aggressive on the trigger. All right, so we'll set it up one more time and then we'll just try and pick up the pace a little bit on the pistol. And obviously that's coming out of a Velcroed flap, coming out of open top, times will be a lot faster than that, uh, up to half a second faster on an open top versus Velcroed flap. All right, same drill.
All right, so that time, uh, I was at 3.19. Okay, five seconds for the part time, but uh, 3.19 just was the time there. So again, it's, uh, and the shots are in. Don't worry about the shots, they're in. Um, no issue with the five second time frame. So at the advanced side of the instructor level, you know, we should be looking at a 3.50 time frame there, especially be able to demo that in front of students at a decent pace and then working to maybe a two second time frame for your rifle to pistol transition. Again, it's gonna be hit and miss based on your target, uh, but from the speed and weapon handling side, it increases your, your speed of weapon handling to try and get those two second time frames, and maybe you just increase the size of the target in order to achieve it until you can achieve it consistently, then maybe we can reduce the size of the target, or maybe we can increase the distance, and there's always you know, different ways to increase difficulty when it comes to combat shooting and skills development, okay? All right, so one more time, we'll just see if we can get it a little bit quicker this time, and we'll just see where we're at. So that was a good one, the double stoppage. Uh, I wasn't prepared for the stoppage on the pistol, but just caught that diagnostic feel. Obviously, we're just shooting one round. Uh, we're not firing two rounds on the pistol. It was just the rifle to pistol transition for the skill set. But here's the thing with these drills. When you're setting yourself up for a drill for the drill's sake to pass a standard, it's kind of unrealistic in terms of the performance that you would need for a real gunfight. Okay? It'd be unrealistic to fire one round uh, one trigger pull on the rifle um, at a target and then hopefully feel for the twang of the bolt lock and back in the empty magazine then change it over pistol. It's completely unrealistic. At a close quarters, uh, uh, or in a close quarters gunfight, if you get a threat with a weapon at seven yards and you present your rifle on him, the intent would be to shoot more than one round. That's and hence why we should always attempt to fire more than one round during those types of engagements. Then we get the actual cue of the rifle not firing based on uh, the trigger, and then we would say for the gun change over to pistol. And so the same thing could be said with the pistol, that it would be unlikely to shoot just one round and go into a scanning procedure. Uh, we'd probably likely shoot more than one round or, or, or be planning to shoot more than one round based on the situation. Okay? So we get into the double stoppage drill, which is in addition to the standard stoppage, uh, and rifle to pistol, which is the double stoppage. So a stoppage on the rifle and a stoppage on the pistol. So the intent here is to identify the stoppage on the pistol by attempting to fire the, the pistol more than one time. And obviously the dead trigger on the Glock where it, it goes dead to the back of the frame indicates that the slide is out of battery. And at that point when I'm trying to fire the pistol and, and pull the trigger a second time, the weapon doesn't fire because the slide's out of battery. At that point we would identify why the slide's out of battery and then we'd be able to observe from the high ready that there's no round in the magazine, no round in the chamber indicating an empty magazine, go through the empty magazine, combat reload, and then we're back in the fight. So we can fire this, uh, it's like a check drill, rifle, pistol, rifle, but it's gonna be rifle, pistol, pistol, rifle, okay? We're gonna try and do this in 10 seconds, okay? It's tight on 10 seconds. Uh, weapon handling has to be good, but the double stoppage, uh, as soon as you rush through this and try it on the range for the first time, guarantee you, you'll fail to pull the trigger more than one time. Okay, so the key points of performance here outside the safety and the weapon handling and rounds and accuracy and speed is going to be that you've actually pulled the trigger twice on both guns to confirm the stoppage rather than just trying to feel for it diagnostically. All right, here we go. Double stoppage. So we're going to set up both guns with empty magazines. Alright, so we've got both guns set up, in fact, let's see. both guns set up for empties and rounds in the chamber. So with this drill, it'll be a rifle presentation, attempt to fire two rounds on occurring, the stoppage on the, the rifle and the trigger, uh, safe the gun, change over to pistol, attempt to fire more than one round, 
Again, we'll get one off and then there'll be a stoppage. We'll do a combat reload on the pistol, re-engage, and then we'll go through uh, getting the rifle back up and running. So essentially, we're just going to take the scan out of the pistol and it's just going to be weapon handling, but it'll be a more realistic drill. Okay, let's see how it goes. Really the cognitive side of uh, getting the drill done is understanding uh, all of your weapon handling and then being able to slow it down uh, at the times that you need to. See the pistol holster is still a little bit of an issue, it was the only part that uh, was a problem, but that was uh, 961 there. Again, the other part too had been in full kit and uh, gloves as well is that it's not, you know, that conducive to combat shooting and you can say hey you know making excuses but this is the way you got to fight this is the way you got to train um, and therefore you know we have to get good at being able to shoot whether you're in a mask NVGs gloves CBRN stuff you know all of that stuff is uh, you know the modern warfighter has to contend with and we've just got to get good at doing it uh, which means we need reps out on the range and sometimes that's the hardest thing to get are those reps okay so when you do get time and my time's uh, going to get cut short here. I've only got an hour to train up here at Freedom Shooting Center, but uh, I try to take the most of that hour, okay? And I'll try to finish off uh, each training session. I'll start it and finish it with an operated readiness test, uh, which incorporates a lot of what we've just done there, um, and just to see how that goes for time. And I try to get it done in 20 seconds, okay? And I try to do it clean uh, as we can. So we're going to set that up now, and then uh, we'll just show you the target at the end of it, okay? So just stand by, and I'll set it up.